Shalom and greetings, you guys, once again to our school of ministry, Manna from Heaven Ministries, Remnant of Truth International, where we're going to continue with the series that we've started some weeks ago pertaining to the fivefold ministry. You've heard all of us mention some things regarding that, meaning Pastor Dave and Minister Brittany Scott and myself. Uh, this is a big deal. You know, when you're getting into the fivefold ministry, um, antennas start going off. And one of the reasons why, because of all the denominational settings that are around within Christianity, and I won't even mention the Messianic Hebrew roots communities, not all of them really look at the fivefold ministry as something aside from the pastor, the shepherd, and the teacher. But the fivefold ministry is the collective hand. It's the hand, I actually believe this, it is the hand of the Spirit that is moving in order to bring together in unity the entire body of Mashiach. So this is an exciting time. Forgive me, I got a little bit of a stuffy nose that's going away. I have my tea right here, and um, I'm excited. This this has been wonderful. I just want to share a couple of things before we get started. Um, what I have, and I just want to throw this out there, is I have many, many, many master files that I have not um, sent to anybody pertaining to all kinds of different series. I'm not even going to mention all of what they are, but we've shared some amazing insights that Abba has given us over the years that are one, two, three, four, five parts, three parts, two parts, seven parts. Um, and I'll, we want to make those available. Remember, the scripture says in Corinthians that the the laborers worthy of their hire and and no I'm, I'm not going to present something for sale whatsoever we've given everything away for years but i believe according to the word according to the melchizedek order especially when those that are treading and digging deep and bringing out the truths of the word i truly believe and i do this to this very day i believe in sowing into that labor so that the laborers within that realm can continue on with the focus that Abba has anointed them with. Remember, we all have 24 hours in a day. How many of us can actually put an entire study together, a series, and then still go about doing the, 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 the regular daily things with our family or work or what have you? It takes a, it takes a lot of uh, focus. Um, it's, it's taxing on, on the flesh. Believe me, it really is. But the greatest reward is being able to look at that treasure that the, the Father has given to the one that digs that out, to be able to look at that, sit back and say, my goodness, I, I would have never even seen these things before. And it's just awesome the way Abba begins to unfold those things as we dig into the Word. So we, we want to make these available master files on many subjects. And what, I'm not going to tell you what all of them are. And I do want to throw this out there. Um, if you guys are interested, not a lot of people are. A lot of people, are, they just want to listen and watch. But man, there's we don't share everything on camera. We really don't. And when you get the notes of these uh, these revelations at times, we I know I do, but Pastor Dave does. We get calls, we get emails, we get text messages, we get Facebook messages, YouTube messages, you name it. And people are blown away at things. And, and, and just to hear the life impact and the impact with their walk begins to be changed and transformed. That, that's the greatest blessing for me and for all of us. So um, we want to make that available. And we're asking for a donation amount of 20 bucks or whatever you want or even more, whatever it might be when it comes to these, uh, these master files. So... We're excited. I'm excited. And I thank you, Abba. Excuse me. No, I'm being interrupted, you guys. Sorry about that. So just take that for what it is. And you guys are probably wondering why I have these glasses. I can't look at the glare uh, because of a surgery I had in my eye a while back. So I need these on, as I've mentioned to many of you guys already. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. And let's get right into this. Father, we praise you. And we thank you for the word that you have given us, for the revelation that is coming forth. 
And Father Abba, we pray and ask that as the word comes forth, that you would Im- that you would impact each and every one that has ears to hear, that can shema hear what the Spirit is saying. We praise your name, we exalt your name, and may tonight be life-changing in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. If you don't have a notepad, if you don't have a pen, if you don't have an iPad, I know a lot of people use that. I don't, I don't even use, I don't even know how to use those. I, I use, um, uh, oh, I'm, I'm being given a sign to take off the glasses. I can't, you guys, I have to leave them on because of the glare. Like I mentioned, I have the glare is, is, is really impacting the eye that had surgery on. So don't worry about my eyes. Just worry about hearing. Remember that Shema. You guys, you got to hear what Abba is saying. So just focus on hearing. Don't worry about me. I have to wear these right now. And there's nothing I can do about it unless Abba does a miracle and touches my eye. But remember, go to livymana.net if you guys are interested uh, for those master files. We'll make those available for you. And uh, we'll get those sent out to you guys. And like I said, we're just asking for a $20 donation. If you want to give more, that'd be a great blessing. Whatever it's worth to you then uh, go ahead and do that, all right? So we're going to get into this, and we're going to finish up today. I won't be really long um, with the subject matter found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, verse 12, I believe it is, and we'll get into that in just a second, and it's dealing with the perfecting part. Now remember, you guys heard me say hearing, and I'm going to build up to the importance of Shema. All right, so I want you to hear what's being spoken tonight. Don't be distracted by my glasses whatsoever. Focus on hearing what the Father has to say. And uh, I can't stress that enough because this is very, very important. Uh, I know you guys want to see what I look like behind the glasses, but you know what? This teaching is way more important. I titled tonight, I titled this Relocating the Dislocated. Relocating the dislocated and we must be perfected into the melchizedek order and then after the perfection of being brought together as the saints right being perfected the set apart ones coming in from the nations will be collectively brought together like the resetting of a dislocated bone remember what i mentioned i'll mention it again when it comes to the word for perfecting it's it's just fascinating what abba has uh has shown and revealed in this in this series so far. I'm, I'm very excited. But one dislocated bone, you guys, on a natural level, can cause a whole lot of pain. One dislocated bone, one, one dislocation in the body will cause pain throughout the entire body. I hope you're following me with what I just mentioned. One dislocation can impact the entire body. And perfecting is for those that are set apart. And Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, he's emphasizing this. He brings this distinct order for a specific reason. And he begins with the perfection part. And perfection will not happen unless an encounter with the hand of the Spirit has happened. I'm going to let that sit there for a minute. (coughs) Let me say that again. Perfection will not happen unless an encounter with the hand of the Spirit has happened. Did you hear what I just said? And here's the the kingdom connection seen in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we see the, the power of the Melchizedek order when it comes to the apostles and them being launched out with the message of repentance. We're going to touch on all these things. So remember, repentance is always connected to this very truth that we're about to hear from the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 28 to 29, which says this, For it seemed good to the Ruach HaKodesh, or HaKadosh, or the Holy Spirit, and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. So I want you to follow what what I'm about to share with you right now from the book of Acts. I'm going into verse 29. The writer here 
<coughs> has recorded, <clears throat> excuse me, the words of a major leader within the Melchizedek order. And this man says something so powerful that I just was stuck on this one verse. He says that we will not lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Now I said, wait a minute. These are a burden that he's going to lay upon the people. But remember, the burden that is being given comes from the Melchizedek order. And this burden is something that is light. It's not heavy. Remember the words of Mashiach when he talked about his yoke and his burden? His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So to live according to the commandments of the Father... The commandments that he claims are his, my commandments, my statutes, my judgments, his covenant. To live according to those is not something that is a heavy burden. It is something that is part of a covenant relationship. And when you truly love someone, there should it should not be hard. It should not be hard to show that love by doing by doing verse 29 says this that you abstain <coughs> excuse me that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication and from from which if you keep yourselves you shall do well and then he says farewell to abstain from meats offered to idols we've touched on these things even in the debate and, and in different teachings to abstain from blood to abstain from things strangled and to abstain from fornication what is he saying he's saying this is the holiness code that is also recorded back in leviticus from chapter 11 all the way through like chapter 19 going in all the way up to even 21 these four categories, you guys, actually prove that being holy, kadosh, or remaining, it, it proves. It, it, let me say it like this. It proves that you're either set apart when you obey these things, and if not, then you are something else. And listen to what I'm about to share with you. These four categories proves being kadosh, listen, or remaining Kadesh by way of actions. Wait a minute. You just said two different words. Kadosh is set apart. Kadesh, the same Hebrew letters for Kadosh for holy in Hebrew. Kadesh is the word for a male temple prostitute. So those who refuse to be obedient to the covenant words, the life source of the relationship between the Most High and us is one who has chosen to remain as a prostitute in the world, a temple prostitute. You see, the fivefold ministries given to assist in the, I call this, the cleanup of wrinkled and spotted garments. I hope you guys heard what I said. I'm going to see who's tuned in. I, I have no idea. I'm going to try and do this with my phone. My Facebook is, and I can only look at um, YouTube. Okay, yeah, I see some of you. Shalom, everybody. And even on Facebook, even though I can't see that, shalom, shalom, everyone, everyone. Did you get that? What a powerful uh, revelation and insight that the same Hebrew letters for holy kadosh are also the same letters for kadesh. So you're either set apart unto one thing or you're set apart unto something else. If you're not set apart unto the Most High, then you're set apart unto the world and the ways of the world. There's no in-between. There's, there's no such thing as in-between. Yes, I know we're on a narrow path. That's called the covenant. After the order of Melchizedek, that's different. But it's interesting that you're either one or the other. The fivefold is given to do, as I said, that cleanup of the wrinkled and spotted garments. Why? He's coming for a bride without spot, without wrinkle. And those are very intimate, private terms. And I'll, I'll let you guys go ahead and research that yourself. 
And if I could say anything when it comes to the fivefold, do not fight the anointing. Do not fight the anointing that is upon those that have been called and anointed with these specific mantles. Because if you fight that shepherd, if you fight that teacher, if you fight that evangelist, if you fight that prophet, if you fight that apostle, <coughs> excuse me, if you fight that, you're not fighting them. You're not fighting against them. You're fighting against the anointed one that gave that mantle gift on them. These gifts are here to help the body, to cause the body to turn around and get cleaned up and begin to walk in the ways of righteousness. The rearrangement, you guys, of this letter for Kadosh and even Kadesh, same Hebrew letters, two different meanings, gives us an interesting Hebrew word called sakad. This is why you got to get these master files so you can see what we're saying. There's a ton of stuff in here that will just fortify you being rooted and grounded in the truth. And you will not be blown away by every wind of doctrine that is coming from many, many pulpits in, in, the, in the days that we're living. And I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm just being real and speaking this truth. We don't have all the answers, but the word of Yah does. All the answers to life and living and relationship is in the word. So this Hebrew word sakad, remember it's the same letters for holy, just read, rearranged, means to be bound to something. Did you hear what I said? To be bound to something. What you do as a believer or even a non-believer binds you to the desire of that very thing. I hope you guys are listening. I hope you have tagged others. I hope you have shared this over and over and over again. Remember Lazarus? He was bound up. And when the Mashiach did what he did, he commanded the people to unravel him. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> he commanded the people to unravel him. He was bound to the tomb of unbelief. Remember his family? If you had only been there, he would have not died. And the Mashiach says his death is only to reveal and manifest the glory of my father. He was bound to the tomb of unbelief and religion until what? Until his time of refreshing came, calling him by his very name. And if Yeshua did not call him by his name, all the graves would have opened up. Everyone, everywhere. He had to be specific. Why? He is the resurrection and the life. So when the resurrection and the life was walking here in the flesh, the level of integrity that Yeshua has and had at that time and still has was that such is at the highest level imaginable. Your integrity is connected to your character. And I'm going to touch on this. Everything being said is just it's woven in, and I, I'm, I'm grateful for what Abba's doing right now. Ephesians 4.12. Let me just go over this verse. <coughs> excuse me, you guys. <clears throat> if verse uh, 4, I mean, excuse me, chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 12. But remember, verse 11 speaks of the fivefold, the ascension gifts. It says, when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts to men, the fivefold ministry. And it says that these are for the perfecting of the saints. I already, this is the second part of perfecting. And we're going to close off with this perfecting so we can get into the work of the ministry, so we can get into the edifying of the body of the Mashiach. We got to finish this. And it's not going to be exhaustive, but it's going to be more than enough, I promise you. And verse 13 says, until, until we are all come together in the unity of the faith. The until clause, did you hear what I said? The until clause is found way back in Genesis 49 verse 10, and it goes hand in hand with Galatians 3.19. And you need to go read those on your own. It's very powerful. Don't just read over those verses. Just really read them and pay attention to what Abba is saying. And it's so amazing. We're going to conclude with this fivefold ministry regarding the perfecting stage at, at, after tonight. But I just want to, there's so much that, that I want to share. I, I get so excited. The believer, remember this, all believers, 
especially the new ones. You remember when you first got saved, you just wanted to tell everybody about Jesus, right? Everywhere. You, you, your, your heart was poured out. You, everywhere. So especially the new believer. The believer should not jump. Listen, the process. The believer should not jump the process. What do I mean? The process that is given. Don't jump the perfecting because then the work's going to be flawed. Don't jump the perfecting in the work because then there'll be no edifying. It'll all be flawed. You got to go through the process. Perfecting leads to authority in the work of the ministry. Did you hear what I said? Let me give you an example. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I, I don't know why I'm coughing now. My throat gets dry. <clears throat> Once again, whoever's tuning in, you see me with these glasses, this fresh haircut. Don't let any of that distract you. Hear what's being said. Hear what the Father is saying through tonight. Genesis 126 actually sets the pattern of the process when it comes to the kingdom here on the earth. I want you to listen to this. Look at the order of things. There's no mistakes. It's in divine order. When the words were given to Moses and he wrote these things down, the father showed him things from way in the beginning. And he was able to have them written down. Genesis 126, I'm going to read it from the King James. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them who man, Adam, that's what the woman and the man were called in the beginning. Let them have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, all of it. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female, I'm using those terms lightly there because they're different words. Created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and so on and so forth. But think about this. Notice what came first. Note this down. This is so amazing. The image and the likeness came first. The image and the likeness must be produced first before there can be any level of power, any level of dominion. I'm going to get to this. Concealed inside of the image and the likeness is the very integrity of Elohim. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> man, oh man. Here's integrity on a simple level. Is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. Doing the honest thing when no one's watching. Being righteous when you're in the private, when no one can see what you're doing. You, you're the same in the private as you are in the public. You're unwavering. I hope you heard what I said. His unwavering integrity, you can go ahead and note this down too. Character is another way of expressing this very process. <coughs> His character is his integrity, and his integrity is his character. First the character, then the dominion. First the character, then the power. You know what's happening today? Many don't want to produce the character, but they want to scream and shout behind a microphone. They want to scream and shout as if they have dominion and power behind a microphone. But in the private, there's no character. There's no integrity. They're not the same behind closed doors. I heard a man once say years and years ago, years ago, he said this. We went to a marriage. It was called a marriage retreat. I don't like using the retreat. We don't retreat. We advance forward. So if there's, it should be advances, men's advances, women's advances, marriage advances, right? We don't want to retreat. We want to advance, right? That's a whole nother thing. But anyways, he said this, you really want to know who a man is? Go talk to his wife. She'll tell you who he is. 
So dominion and power that's detached from character produces one baby. Are you ready? It produces chaos. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the perfecting of the saints. We're just unpacking a whole bunch of stuff pertaining to that. Let's look at these two words in Hebrew, these two Hebrew phrases, in our image and after our likeness. The first one in our image is Bet Salmenu, after our likeness is Kid Mutenu. Notice these two come from the action of this one phrase, Naase. <clears throat> we will, we will make. We will make man in our image. We will Naase. <clears throat> Man, we will make man in our image after our likeness. The Adam was the vessel chosen, was the vessel chosen to manifest the Creator's character. Did you hear what I said? Betsamenu holds the first revelation that consists of the fragrance and the aroma. All right, I am so sorry, you guys. I got this cough out of nowhere because I get excited and I start coughing. <clears throat> I got to calm down. John, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. So the image produces and consists of the fragrance and the aroma. Did you hear that? It produces the fragrance and the aroma of the creator's character. When his character is within you and has been created in you, you have been set on the potter's wheel and the father begins to form and shape his character and integrity in your life, you give off an aroma in the spirit realm. You give off a fragrance in the spirit realm. I know what I'm talking about. This is in the scripture. Just read Isaiah 11 verse 3. Look at the Hebrew text there. The image is what the creator comes to smell, which should be saturated with the fragrance that would be inside of man, or we could say the Adam. I found this fascinating. No coincidence, you guys. None whatsoever. None. The numerical value of the phrase Betsamenu is the same for the word Reach, which means to smell found in Isaiah 11.3. The first step is producing character, which is fragrance, which is the aroma. Those who radiate the beauty of integrity. Are you listening? This is what Acts 15 was talking about. The Coming out of exile, you smell like the nations and it's a horrible stench. So the fivefold ministry has the perfected hand upon them. To help clean up those coming in from exile. That brings tears to my eyes because it's so powerful. So powerful. The bride is to carry the same aroma upon her, especially when no one's looking. Especially when no one's looking. If I asked you a question is, what kind of fragrance is coming off of your life? It's easy to tell what kind of fragrance and aroma is coming off of your life by this. Who are you attracting? The world or the kingdom? The world or the kingdom? Sin and death or life and life more abundantly? I hope this is ministering to somebody. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry, you guys. That was not happening. Think about that. The bride is to carry this same aroma all over her. This is true character. I'm giving you an example of what I just mentioned opening up. Next, we have kidmutenu, which comes from the word damut in Hebrew. It means a resemblance or a likeness. So the image contains the character while the likeness, listen, reveals it. The image carries the character like a flower. And the likeness blossoms that so the aroma goes everywhere. I can't tell who's watching. My phone shut off. I don't know what happened. But I pray this is blessing somebody. 
It's all about the character of the Most High. Damut. The image contains the character while the likeness reveals it. How? Through the fragrance. And this is why the root letters of character right here, the root letters of what I'm referencing as character right here is Damut. From Damut, excuse me, the resemblance, right? Is, comes from, is the root word Duma. The root of Damut which, which is the, the heart of Kidmutenu for after our likeness, comes from the root word Duma, which means silence. I, I hope, I wish we had a ton of young people here for what I'm about to share right now. Character. <laughs> I'm so excited. Abba's word is so fascinating. Character doesn't need to speak. A flower doesn't make any sound. It just gives off an aroma. The aroma is doing all the talking. You could talk, 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 talk. But the aroma that's coming off of your life, is it kingdom? Is it covenant? Or is it worldly? Who's comfortable being around you? Who's uncomfortable being around you? When a non-believer comes around you, they automatically should sense that you have a different aroma from them and there should be a conviction, not a condemnation, a conviction on their life because you're of a different spirit. And the spirit of the Most High that lives in you is giving off an aroma to get their attention to where the, hopefully they'll be drawn into that beauty and want to know, what is it about you? I want that. That's heavy. That's so powerful. That is so powerful. Character doesn't need to speak. Character doesn't need to defend itself. It already makes its statement through the lives of those who have come through the process that leads to righteousness. Character will silence, listen, all false accusations. Some might say no. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Some might say no, not at all. Sure it was. The Mashiach was silent before the people. His character, he, he held his integrity. His life proved his innocence, so they falsely accused him. But his character silences the false accusations in the courts of heaven, if that makes sense. Character will silence all false accusations. You don't have to defend yourself. Let your character give off the aroma. Get closer to the Most High and let that fragrance and that aroma just radiate off your life even more so as the sun shines upon who you are in Him. So you truly, think about this, you truly can't have dominion and power without the character that does not change. You can't. You see, Yahweh Elohim wanted the people to know his character. And the scripture says, this is Mashiach in you. Everyone, Romans and Galatians and uh, Colossians, 127, all over the place. It's Messiah inside of you, Yeshua in you, Mashiach in you, the hope of glory, the character of Elohim through the Messiah that lives in us. Character is the same in the public as it is in the private. In Exodus, think about this. Watch this. This blew my, my mind about six, seven years ago. That's not even a long time. I said, man, I didn't even know that. <coughs> I had no idea. But this blew my mind in Exodus 32, verse 16. This is the chapter where the golden calf is made by the people. See, impatience is the absence of love. Love is patient, love is kind. They were impatient. They truly didn't love the Most High that delivered them. And that's what happens a lot is people will cry out when all hell's breaking loose, they get delivered, but then some of the time, I'm trying to be nice. When it seems like everything's fine now, you've been set free, you want to create some kind of golden calf in your life because you're impatient. Love is patient. 
So let's look at Exodus 32, verse 16, and it says this. And the tables were the work of God, Elohim. And the writing was the writing of God, Elohim, graven upon the tablet. So he's already qualifying who this came from. So that means the words of his covenant were perfect. That means you can't pick one out and say that one's no longer for us, but we'll keep all the other ones. No, you're messing with his character now. You're telling him that your character's flawed. You shouldn't have put this one in there. That's a dangerous thing. He's, he's holy. He's set apart. He's just. He's righteous in its fullest capacity. And that still doesn't completely describe him. Our Elohim, our Father, our King. <coughs> but look at this. <clears throat> It says, God, he gra gra graven these words upon the tablets of stone. The word graven is charut. It means to engrave. It's also another word for freedom. The next time any preacher tells you that the law of God is done away with, we don't have to obey none of it, ask him which part is. The sacrificial part is done absorbed by the lamb of god elohim slain before the foundation of the world but when it comes to the ten commandments keep it basic show me which ones are done away with well that fourth one right there you know hey we don't need to walk you're messing with the character of the most high you better not touch his shabbat because he had that way before there were the ten commandments he had his shabbat and he has always been to tamper with and change and readjust the word that has been given to us to live by is to mess with the integrity and the character of Elohim. No wonder the world can look at a lot of churches and say, man, that looks like a nightclub. Man, that's supposed to be a prophet. They look like a prostitute. Man, that, that lady's supposed to be a prophetess and her look at her skirt. You can see all through everything. Where's the character and the integrity? Where's the holiness? I know I'm talking kind of strong right now, but I'm very passionate because this is real. We have a generation that's dying. You have an entire generation dying off. Because a lot of men and women, not all, but many want to play games. It's This is not the time anymore. That's it. Stop it all. We've got to grab a hold and say, Abba, I shared with someone. It was very personal. My wife was counseling and so was I. And I shared something with somebody. Maybe this is a blessing to you hearing. I said, listen, open up the book of Psalms. Begin to read the Psalms from chapter 1 all the way through. Don't even stop. I said, it's interesting that every Psalm is called a Mizmor. Those same letters, Mizmor, can be pronounced Mizmer. What's Mizmer? I thought it's just a psalm. No, Mizmor is the psalm. But the psalm becomes something powerful for you. What do you mean? A Mizmor is also a Mizmer, which means to what? Prune a tree of dead branches that don't produce any fruit. We want his character. Let me move on. There's so much I can share. I'm trying. I said this is not going to be a long one tonight. Like I have, I have something I have to do. But charut comes from charat. This word is seen one time in Exodus 32 verse 16 in the entire Tanakh, the whole, entire Old Testament. This word used for graven is charat, and it's the same word for character. He engraved his character in the commandments. <coughs> he engraved his character within his covenant. You can't mess with the covenant because you're challenging the character of the king. It's a heavy, powerful statement. The covenant contained the character. We are to image here. An expression of this character is the likeness of our creator here on the earth. As it is in heaven, let it be here on the earth. Let your character manifest in me, therefore the aroma and fragrance of your kingdom is, is noticed by everything around me. When you read 
Charat the other way. This is interesting. It's the name of Abram's father, Terach. He lacked integrity and he lacked character. That's why he settled only half ways to the promised land. And Abram says, we will not. We will continue going on all the way to the promise. That's char character don't quit. Character don't buckle. Character don't forfeit. Character says, I don't know what it is, but I've got to finish my race. I've got to finish my calling. I've got to finish this. Because it's not about me. It's about his name. It's about his integrity. I'm representing the king here on the earth. So my character better image him. And the likeness better radiate the fragrance of those very things of who he is. Don't choose family, you guys, over the father. Don't choose family over the redeemer of your soul. Kingdom character is the goal still today. We all have family we love. We all have family. I want to see all my family saved and serving the Father and, and letting go of those things of the world. I'm not going to condemn nobody. But do not choose family over the Most High. But that's my so-and-so. That's, you don't know. No. Serve Him. By making that decision, you know you're on the right track. The covenant words, you guys, they bring freedom, which the character of Yahweh himself, the they, his very character, it, it expresses, it expresses itself when we live according to that. Now, having been long-winded to give you this example of, <laughs> of the perfecting process. I hope this was a blessing to you guys. Let me finish this. Perfecting, remember, is that kat artismas, and it means a complete furnishing of something. A complete furnishing of something that was even dismantled or in a place of dislocation. Did you hear what I said? That's so powerful. That word comes from kat artizo, which means the repair, tikkun in Hebrew. Tikkun. This word for perfecting, repairing, is also the has the, holds the meaning of. Um, I'm trying to think of the word now. I should have wrote it down and I didn't. It has to do with replacing, resetting a dislocated bone. Remember Ezekiel? The, the dry bones? Perfecting of the saints is... What's the term they use? Darn it. Excuse me. When you res oh, reset a dislocated bone. <coughs> resetting. Perfecting is resetting. So the beginning parts is going to be painful. It'll be painful. What do you mean? I can't have Christmas anymore? That's painful. Easter? Painful. I got to let go of the of pork chops and bacon? Painful. In the beginning. That's part of the perfecting process. It's got to happen. Why am I saying that? Because what I mentioned earlier with Acts chapter 15. So here's some areas of dislocation that are in need of relocation. And I wish I could cover them all and I can't. I'm going to kind of cover most of them. But I just wanted to give you guys several. <coughs> man, I hope I don't get any bad emails. Like, man, you're coughing. Why, why don't you just, you're interrupting the study. Well, I apologize for interrupting the, the man speaking. Anyways, so look at this. <clears throat> Here's several or many. Not all, but many. I thought these were interesting that came to me. Here's some dislocation areas that need to be relocated in proper perfection. Number one, the ways of the nation and their idolatry. That's a dislocation. Idolatry and idolatrous practices. The, the, the prophets were given a word to prophesy that this would happen. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, it said this would happen. In Deuteronomy 28, this would happen. This is dislocation. 
in 2 Kings, Jeroboam, Rehoboam did thing. One of the brothers did something real horrible. Alternative worship days and saying we're doing it unto Yah. That's a dislocated bone in need of perfection from a true fivefold ministry, not one that's going to sugarcoat where you're at and you stay connected to idolatry because the guy at the pulpit is saying that we're not under that stuff anymore. All these things uh, are all right. I'm, I was trying to, I'm trying to be nice. I almost said something pretty intense. The next thing is the Shema, hearing, dislocated, altars, wrong altars, dislocated, replacement theology. What goes in the body and what does not, that's called holiness. Priesthoods, people are trying to put on a, appendages again that we've been healed from. <coughs> Meaning this, <clears throat> if it was not for the priesthood system under Aaron, we would not know how to draw near to the Most High. That was needed. But that entire system was like an appendage so Israel can temporarily know how to learn how to walk. Sacrifices, dislocation, temples, the Aaronic or the Melchizedek. Israel or something else greasy grace or the power of grace to live covenant these are some areas dislocation took place way back in the garden and Yeshua came to repair the breach Isaiah speaks about this as he administered redemption you see some in the messianic and Hebrew roots some and people are like why does he always say it because it's this is crazy stuff that's still happening some of these circles might say that Yeshua could not, did not, and will not function here on the earth as high priest, but the scriptures show us something different, and I'm, I'm going to put something together pertaining to that. The Father ordained him, and John the Baptist recognized the ordination on his life. That's why he was immersed in the water, so he can function as priest even here on the earth, because the earth is his and the fullness thereof. First, when altars are mentioned, there is always a priesthood. The majority of the time, some kind of priest involved all the time in Scripture. Way back in, well, Noah, he built an altar. He was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Way back then. <coughs> Excuse me. The ways of the nation produced idolatry, acceptance, alternative altars, you guys, that are raised up to pagan gods is a major dislocation major there is one message and one name to be known look at isaiah 52 verse 6 and 7 says this therefore my people shall know my name therefore they shall know in that day that i am he that does speak behold it is i how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring good tidings that pu that publishes peace that brings good news watch you're gonna this is gonna be crazy and powerful that brings good tidings of good things that publishes salvation that says unto zion thy god elohim reigns what a powerful statement from the prophet isaiah the word publishes here in verse 7 is the word shama to hear to hear then why did Yeshua open up blind eyes before deaf ears? Because the people's eyes went wandering around. They were the eyes that get dislocated, the ears will follow suit. It's the truth. The entire body of Mashiach must return to the Shema. Look at li listen to Yeshua's response to the religious people, the scribes, mind you, the masters of writing. They know all the secrets in there. Because they write them. They just didn't know the secrets of Mashiach throughout them. <coughs> Pray for me, guys. <clears throat> Mark chapter 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes coming near, hearing them, reasoning together, knowing that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first command of all? Verse 29. And Yeshua answered him and said, the first of all commandments, look at this, is this. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? No. That's the second part of the first. 
the first command of all commands is Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one, if I may say. And then it says, And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength and resources. This is the first command. The word strength there can mean resources. That means you are to show him that you love him by sowing into the ground. This is Torah now. Where his word comes forth from, especially the oxes that are treading. All these fake prophets and apostles everywhere that, that are trying to talk about it's it's the wealth transfer now and all th those guys are they're they're distorting the word. They have some truth and some error that makes them lukewarm. You got a lot of lukewarm apostles and prophets out there. It's all covenant or nothing. Throughout all scripture, this truth is constantly mentioned, you guys. The word for here is Shema. One of the many definitions of Shema is obedience. Did you hear what I said? If we claim to hear what the Father is saying, proof that we hear Him is doing what He says. It's proof. Now here's something interesting. The Hebrew word Shema holds the same value of the years that Solomon's temple stood, 410. Temples and tabernacles are instituted because man refused to Shema. I've been, I was hammered for that statement years ago and I'm still going to hold fast to it. It's the truth. If man listened, we wouldn't need temples and tabernacles. It's the truth. The Shema was dislocated and in Mashiach, the Shema is healed if you can hear what i'm saying hearing is vital when it comes to the kingdom in order to do what abba says we must first hear shema what is spoken so the first of all commandments is shema someone needs to type that in there shema tell the people around you the first of all the commandments is shema we need is hearing we've got to hear shema hear obey what he has spoken out of one side of the mouth many say they love and out of the other side, they actually reject the Father and don't love because the Shema is still dislocated from their heart. It's the truth. To truly claim, to truly claim to love Yahweh Elohim is to Shema what he says, to hear and obey. That's what Shema is, to hear and do it. Now it's proof that you heard what he said. What did James say? You say you have faith? You show me your faith without the works, without doing. I'll show you my faith by what I do. What is he saying? The Shema is proof. It goes hand in hand with my faith. That's, that's heavy stuff. Very powerful stuff. In Luke 7, 22, Yeshua told the disciples of John, remember they came to him. They were curious. Are you the Mashiach? Those after the Aaronic mantle of John, that the blind, the deaf, lame, mute, dead, and lepers, etc. are all healed. This physical act, you guys, this physical act of, of the miraculous was a message of restoration. And it's interesting, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Yeshua performs a miracle on the guard of one of the guards of the high priest, Caiaphas. It wasn't the Romans that came to the Garden of Gethsemane, it was the priestly guard Luke twenty two fifty says this and one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear and Yeshua answered and said suffer ye thus far and he touched his ear and healed him in John eighteen ten, it gives the name of who this guard was then Simon Peter having a sword drew it how many people are drawing the sword of the creator oh you're not pronouncing his name right and they're cutting off the hearing of the people where they want nothing to do with the most high anymore <laughs> what a shame what a shame stop stop trying to draw your sword all the time let that sword be used to circumcise your own heart first 
There's a lot of Torah terrorists out there, a lot of named terrorists out there, but they don't even produce the character. They say one thing and do another. Yahweh said this, and then they go do something else. You don't have any integrity, no character, nothing. Don't go around telling people how much you love Yah and, and, and tell them about the name when you can't even show forth the character and the integrity of his name. That's why Mashiach says, I manifested your name to the ones you have entrusted to me, that they may be one just as you and I are one, as I and you, you and me, and me and them. Integrity, character, perfecting of the saints. The name of this man in John 18.10 is Malchus or Malchut. The Mashiach had to heal the hearing of the kingdom. It was distorted. Revelation 13.9 says this, If anyone has an ear, let him shama. Let him hear. Shema is the sign that we pursue his love. That's the sign that we pursue his love. When the shema is restored, then those who shama will approach the correct altar. Boy, that's going to ruffle some feathers, right? <coughs> the altar you come to shows who you are hearing. The altar you come to shows you who you have given your ear to. I'll just leave it at that. I don't have to say anything else. As for me in my house... We're gonna we we've come to the altar of the king. Hebrews 13 10 says this we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle or the temple. Those who want to serve the temple, the tabernacles of men, now that Mashiach has come, they have no right to come to the altar of Yeshua. How will you be redeemed then? That's a frightening thought. Shema is connected to the Melchizedek altar outside the temples, outside the tabernacles of men. These were all plan B. He has come to plug us back into plan A. Boy, oh boy. Oh my goodness. Abba, help me. These were all, all of them. The, the act of mercy that Abba showed until the times of restoration come from the presence of the Most High. <coughs> he put on prosthetic limbs so Israel can learn how to walk. These were all prosthetic limbs, the animal sacrificial system, the priesthood of the Levites, the tabernacle. Don't get me wrong, every one of those things have a revelation on multiple level, countless levels of Yeshua. All of them, but they were all prosthetic legs. They can function sort of. They can teach you how to walk, but they're not the original. They're not the intended, they're imposed. These were all prosthetic limbs given to Israel because of an IED. I think that's impoverished explosive device. While they were walking in the desert, ask some of these military men out in the desert, all of a sudden, certain roads, boom, out of nowhere. Limbs are blown off. And my heart goes out to them. Trust me, I have a family. Many, many military people that were, many family members were in the military. So I have the greatest respect for those who are willing to lay their life down. Notice the Mashiach doesn't define it. He says, no greater love that, does anyone have than this than to lay his life down for, his, for their friends. Very powerful. That IED blew off their walk of righteousness because of their idolatrous desires. And how many today are in need of restoration and healing how many will come to the altar outside these temple systems of men in order to be restored and experience true tikkun tikkun is repair very powerful word tikkun he came to repair he's the master repairer of the breach paul to the galatians he emphasizes what i just said in galatians 3 19 why then the torah <coughs> why was the torah given it was added because of transgressions or iniquity. 
until the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained through messengers in the hand of a mediator. First off, Peter mentions that the writings of Paul were complex in times, at many times, and they were filled with great depth that he says something very interesting in 2 Peter 3.16. That's why when you read Paul's epistles, you got to take your time and you can't create a doctrine out of two verses. We see this all the time and it's easy to, to dismantle. When you come to the truth of his altar and his covenant, his priesthood, his kingship, and all of that of Mashiach, you can identify these deceptions. 2 Peter 3.16 As also in all epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, dislocated, and unstable, dislocated, wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Dislocated, dislocated. The word added is prosthetheme. Excuse me, prosthetheme. The, the word prosthetic comes from that, for the word added here in Galatians 3.19. Very interesting. The Mashiach, Yeshua, he came to heal the broken. He came to deliver the oppressed. You know, my prayer, just because of things that transpired this week, today, major ministering and counseling with people, it's taxing. But when a shepherd, when you love, so, when you love the people, you don't mind. Because if the greater one has entrusted his anointing upon your life. Is my prayer is that people that have been rejected, broken abandoned, left for nothing, children, and then go astray trying to find who they are by sleeping around or doing drugs or getting into gangs and or a life of violence. I pray that you be set free and delivered. That's not who you are. As Abba called you to be a son and daughter of the kingdom. And may the blinding spells of the enemy be removed in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And may healing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually Wherever anyone needs that, I'm in need of healing right now with this stuff he knows. But there's others that are in need of great healing. Abba, may your healing waves of water from the river of life flood the lives of those in need today. Your character proclaims those truths. Your integrity holds fast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The saints are those who have been sanctified and now are being brought back into the fold in order for the house of living stones to be rebuilt. And Yeshua is the master architect, if, if I can say that, of this house. The perfecting leads to the building in order to do the work. Did you hear what I said? Because that's part of what we're building up in this series. The added appendages must be removed in order to be fitly framed together. You cannot put an original with an appendage. It's going to be off. He comes to restore everything so that everything is fitly framed together in balance. Not, <coughs> not one board is greater than the next. When you look at these boards, these... Connecting things in, in the tabernacle. The word there is achim, brothers. Powerful. Hallelujah. We have to remove the idolatry, the replacement theology, animal blood, sin, rebellion, all that leads to death. Yeshua came to remove the appendages of death that once had its grips on all of us. On all of us. And lastly, I'm closing. This word perfecting of the set apart ones. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Kat artismas. A complete furnishing, as I mentioned. Repairing a breach. This is used in the tabernacle as well as the wall being prepared even in Ezra's day. This word comes... From the word kat artizo, as I said, which means to repair. It's tikkun in Hebrew, restore. He's a, 
He's the God, the Elohim of restoration. It means to mend or to reset a broken bone. Painful. Very painful. I've never had a broken... Well, no, I take that back. I have, I, In my hand, I had a, a broken knuckle because of stupidity. But yeah, that legs and limbs, those bones break. You feel that from what I hear. You will feel that. The bones of Adam, you guys, are the essence of Adam. And it is who the bride is. In Ezra 4.12... Speaking of rebuilding the wall, the phrase to set up is kalal. That means to make whole. The wall is the bride. <coughs> the bride is to be built up, cleaned up, in preparation for the coming king, perfected. The bones Ezekiel speaks of are the misplaced framework of the true bride. Her former state was allowed to be dried up in order to be clothed with the kingdom truth and to radiate and give off that aroma and fragrance of the character and integrity of the father and his name when the character and integrity is the aroma coming out of our life now you are one who's manifesting his name and yeshua said i have manifested your name what is he saying i've given off the aroma of my father's name and it's it'll draw those and it'll push snakes off Her former state, the bride, was dried up. Yeshua came preaching one thing. He came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is ahead. He came preaching the good news of the kingdom because that's the garments of the bride. He came telling the whole world. When this was dropped in my spirit, what I'm about to say, it just I, I was bawling. I shut everything down. I was just bawling. The love he has for his people is, gosh, is, is matchless. He clothed her in the good news. He came preaching one thing, and we can safely say the message he came preaching of perf that was the perfecting, the message of the kingdom bride. He came telling the whole world who his bride is. Gosh. I hope you guys are listening. He didn't come condemning his bride. He didn't come exposing her. He came and covered her in his blood. My goodness, he came telling, he wasn't ashamed of her. He came telling the world who his bride is through what? The good news, or can I say, it, th this is levels of revelation that Abba has in his word. The good news of the kingdom, another way of saying that is this. Listen, those of you that have been rejected and you don't think you're worthy, he says something different. He says this, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She's mine. He's mine. They are my people. The first purpose is to repair the woman as bride. She must be a fit bride for the coming king. This means she must willfully remove the former garments she has worn for so long. And this is what restoration, repair, and return is. And this is what the first stage is called the perfecting of the saints. Shalom, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, I pray that you guys, if you're just tuning in um, and you haven't heard this whole message, I, I truly believe this was a very personal, impacting, and powerful truth. And we're on this series of the fivefold ministry. When I'm done with this series, it's it's going to be for those of you that want uh, master files and stuff. As I mentioned earlier, you go to livingmana.net. Sow a seed of what these are worth to you. I'll just say that. If they're only worth a dollar, sow a dollar. If they're worth a thousand dollars, sow a thousand dollars. 
whatever it is, that will come back to you. Hallelujah. Until we see each other again, remember, share, like, subscribe, and tag others. Shalom, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to Manna from Heaven Ministries, Remnant of Truth International, the School of Ministry. Shalom, you guys.